What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. I am Chad, the reseller Rockefeller. Today, I think is uh, March the 22nd. Today is the second day of this uh, massive toy haul. If you haven't already checked out the haul video, uh, go check out my last video. Basically, I just kind of show all of these toys uh, in the day, you know, yesterday when I picked them up and I kind of just do a quick unboxing. Actually, the video turned out to be really long just because, you know, I was going through the box is really slow but there's some pretty good information and I talk about some other stuff in the video so definitely go check that video out uh, but anyways uh, today I have been uh, pretty pretty busy I've been going through all of the bins I've been pulling out all of the toys and I've been trying to just get a good understanding of what I have. I've been trying to see how many uh, of the same toy do I have. Do I have doubles and triples of the same toy? And uh, I've been finding all kinds of really good gems. Items that, you know, are selling for a lot more money than I thought they would. So that was really good. So as you can see behind me, I have all of these toys spread out all over the warehouse. And uh, it's a big mess right now. But uh, I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse uh, into what I'm actually doing right now. We're going to talk a little bit more about what I've learned uh, after doing a bunch of research last night. You know, the, this collection and... Uh, you know, this, the, the world of Springfield toys in general. I just learned so much just by doing a little bit of research. And I actually found a really good website that's like a, a complete database that somebody obviously put together of uh, every toy, every accessory, every environment that is included in each one of the series. I haven't really figured out how many series there is, how many sets, all of that good stuff. But uh, I did talk to a really good friend of mine who is a, uh, what I consider to be a toy expert. The guy is, you know, he's been buying and selling toys for like 40 years, and uh, he's a really good friend of mine. I've done business with him in the past. He's just uh, a really good guy. Uh, I, just, I spoke to him briefly, and I kind of just wanted to get his opinion on what I should do in terms of, should I set these up and sell these as like complete sets or a complete series? Or should I piece each individual item out? And basically, he told me that, you know, years and years ago, back in like the early 2000s when these toys came out, there was tons and tons of collectors. Everybody was trying to put together series, and most of those collectors back in that time period, just like this guy, he said most of them, you know, completed what they were trying to complete. So, uh, basically, he did give me some other information regarding newer collectors, people that really didn't get on the craze back then, but nowadays uh, they, they, they're actually collecting these. So he thinks that I would be better off selling them individually. And he also said, you know, he thinks I would probably be able to make more money just because, you know, if you put together a complete series, you're going to be able to get pretty decent money, but you're going to have to pay, you know, astronomical amount of money for shipping. Obviously, a complete series is a bunch of pieces that I would have to box up. And uh, I just, you know, I just think that, you know, selling them individually is gonna be the best bet for me. Um, I think that there's people still collecting them. And I think that, you know, people are still looking for individual figures or individual uh, environments or accessories or, or whatever the case may be. There's also a bunch of other toys that are not really, you know, included the World of Springfield series. Uh, so those toys are gonna sell good too. And uh, all in all, it's just been a wonderful day. Even though it's been a lot of work, it's definitely well worth it. Uh, this was a very good buy. I've already spoke to a couple other resellers. And, uh, you know, I, I, I find myself in a situation to where some people that are resellers understand, you know, purchases like this. But then there's other resellers that, that look at stuff like this and they automatically think that, you know, oh, there's not really any real value. You're not really going to make a buttload of money. You're not going to make, you know, and those kinds of resellers are just, <laughs> I just, I find it hard to believe that there's anybody out there uh, that's in the business of buying and selling stuff that wouldn't have bought this, you know, this much toys for 200 bucks. I mean, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, it, this could have been some of the lowest, dingiest little toys made, and I probably still would have paid that kind of money just because the the, the mere, uh, you know, volume, the, the amount of how many pieces and units individually is just way over what I expected. So far, I have gotten better count, and uh, I counted some of the figures, and I was at like 700 and something, and I quit because 
I was just pulling them out of boxes and I had nowhere else to set them. So uh, anyways, I'm thinking that there's probably going to be like a thousand pieces all together. That's if you count all of the figures, all of the other bigger, uh, you know, pieces and all of the loose toys. I did find quite a few uh, loose toys and I actually called the guy uh, this morning and basically he said that he put together a, a complete set based on he had doubles of the same item. So this is a complete set of a certain series and he has all of the environments which is in one of the bins and these are all of the loose figures that go with those environments. And he said he put it together on display in his home. Uh, and so that's why there is loose figures. So anyways, let me go ahead and flip the camera around so you can get a better look at what everything looks like outside of the bins. Okay, so basically what I did was I just started to pull all of the toys out of the bins. And uh, I started to place all of the figures up on the table so that I could see if I had any doubles or triples of the same exact toy. And uh, as you can see, I do, uh, some of these I only have doubles of, but I mean, like this one here, I have four of these, you know, I have five of those, two of these, two of those, two of those. There's bunches of doubles. I have four of these, have five of those. So obviously that's really good because I only need to make one listing and then I'll just put multiple quantity. So that's really good. Uh, all of these down here are just regular single figures. I don't have, you know, any more than just one of those. So those are, you know, all piled up there. Down below the table, uh, kind of just a big mixture. So there's a bunch of these, which is the, uh, it comes with an environment, and then it comes with a figure and a couple of accessories. But uh, there's quite a few of those. I do have some doubles, but most of them are just singles. I also have more figures behind me. More of these down here. I got some miscellaneous, uh, just uh, different toys down there that I haven't pulled out yet. Here's some other figures. Here is some other miscellaneous stuff that I don't, you know, obviously isn't a part of of the the world of springfield uh series but these are pretty good uh toys that i kind of i did some research on some of these some of these seem to be selling pretty good so I'm, I'm grateful for that i got bunches of different stuff like this i mean stuff like this should bring decent money i don't expect stuff like that to sell for you know hundreds of dollars but I do believe that some of this stuff is going to bring pretty decent money. I do have a couple of these. I mentioned it in the video last night, the haul video. Uh, I did look this one up, and this one seems to be selling for pretty good money, and I do have uh, a couple of those. So I think these are going to make my money back, uh, my total investment. So that's really good because if I sell a couple of those at like 50 bucks each, then I should be able to uh, make my you know initial investment back, and then literally everything else that I sell is just going to be pure profit. And so that's why I, I, it's hard for me to understand or believe why some resellers would not have uh, made this purchase. It's just it's just mind blowing. Obviously, um, you know you could say, well, well, Chad, these toys are not. You know, they're not highly sought after and they're not, you know, they're not Hot Wheels and they're not G.I. Joe's or, you know, anything, you know, like video games or something like that. But they're definitely uh, a toy that was once really popular. And obviously, you know, The Simpsons um, still has a really big cult following and uh, people are still collecting them. I mean, I talked to a, a, a toy expert. My buddy is, you know, has been in the business for a very long time and uh, he deals in everything when it comes down to toys. And I told him uh, exactly, you know, what I purchased and how much I paid for it all. I sent him some pictures and the guy was just blown away. He just said that, you know, he's never seen anybody sell this many uh, figures and, and with all of these environments and you know, everything that's included here. And as you can see, I still have six bins that I haven't even touched yet. Those bins are still completely full of toys. I haven't even went through those bins yet. 
and these two bins down here. Those have not been touched yet. So basically, if you look right here, I have one, two, three, four, five bins there. Try not to move the camera fast. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I have gone, I have gone through total eleven bins out of uh I think there was 21 in total. So I mean I still have 10 bins almost. This pink one's halfway gone through, and then there is that one that's open. So I have like six bins right here, seven, eight bins that I haven't even touched. So I want to talk a little bit about, you know, pulling the trigger and, you know, making purchases like this. And I also want to talk a little bit about, you know, how to find purchases like this. So I posted a picture on my Instagram and I've gotten some questions uh, regarding uh, how to find deals like this. And so let me touch uh, let me touch on that topic for a minute and then we'll move on to some other things. Basically, I, it's not like, there's not like a specific answer that I can give you. There is numerous things that you can do to, to put yourself out there in a position to where you're able to find deals like this or put yourself out there in a position where deals like this come to you. And I've said it in plenty of videos. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you need to subscribe because I talk about this type of stuff in, in pretty much all of my videos. You need to put advertisements up. You need to let people know that you're a buyer, that you have cash, and that you're looking to buy items. I know it sounds, you know, cheesy. I know that it sounds cliche, but I get more business from just people contacting me. If you are a follower of Craigslist Hunter, he has a great channel. His name is Pete. If for, if for some reason you're not subscribed to his channel, go check him out. Go subscribe to his channel. I'm going to use him as an example. Pete owns a, a buy, uh, it's like a trading post. So imagine a pawn shop without the actual, you know, the option to pawn your items he basically does buy, sell, and trade. And he gets a lot of business because people come into a shop wanting to sell him items. He also gets a lot of business because people in his local area know him as a buyer. You know, so, you know, you have to put yourself out there in a position to where people realize that you're actively seeking to buy items on a regular basis. And you're automatically going to receive tons of calls, emails, messages, and people are just going to seek you out because no matter what, it doesn't matter where you live in this country, there's always people trying to sell stuff. There's always people trying to get rid of something. People need money for, for whatever reason. You know, I get phone calls all the time. You know, hey, I have such and such. I need cash right now. I need to pay my rent or I need to pay my light bill. I have these items that I can sell. Are you interested? I get questions all the time regarding, you know, different things and just, you know, just abundance of phone calls. And so one of the best things that I could tell anybody that's getting into reselling and even some of you that are veterans, people that have been in the game to get out there and put in some work. You got to put in the work to be able to receive the rewards. You have to, you know, make sure that people know and realize that you're a reseller and that you're buying items and that you're willing to pay decent prices. That's another really big uh, hurdle that I see a lot of resellers not, not being able to get themselves over. They try to such a good deal, they in return push away people instead of bringing people in. So basically what I'm trying to say is if people are calling you or people you know respond to your Craigslist ad and you're constantly giving them like really low offers on items, it's only going to hurt your business. It's not going to help your business. If people are, you know, if, if, if you want to get the trust of your town or your city or even your state, I mean, I know some resellers that are really big resellers, they have the, you know, their entire state behind them. People that I, uh, that I'm friends with up in North Carolina, I have a friend of mine who runs a, a very similar place to, to Pete in Chicago and he has people from all over the entire state of North Carolina bringing him items literally because he has been you know he has been known uh as the buyer he's been known as the person that will pay the most money for whatever it is that you're trying to sell he runs a really big profitable business and that's what you have to do so you know for instance you know i'm in a very small town of gainesville florida uh home of the florida gators and a very big university 
but there's not really a lot here. You know, as far as, you know, places to take items, there's only a couple of pawn shops. There's a few thrift stores. Um, there's a couple of like boutique stores downtown. But if you're an average citizen in the town of, you know, Gainesville and you want to get rid of something, let's say for instance, it's a, a vintage uh, stereo receiver. And you know that this item is really cool. You know that the item is worth about 200 bucks. There's nowhere in this town that you can just take that item and get a decent offer. It's really hard to do that because pawn shops pay very little for your items. They're always, you know, just trying to pretty much peel your entire, you know, your entire scalp back. And uh, the, the very few thrift stores that are around, they either say that they're not buying items or they, they offer you ridiculously low prices. And there's a reason for that because th these big places have to have, they have to make enough money to pay all of this overhead. They, they usually don't sell online, so they can only pay a certain percentage of what an item's actually worth because they're not able to even get full retail for the item. So, I mean, there's bunches of reasons why these places are, you know, not only are they not able to offer you any kind of uh, real money, but they're just, you know, they're looking to get over on those people that are, that, that are in need for that money and need that money instantly. That's what pawn shops are. They take advantage of people when they are desperately in need of money. And all you have to do as a reseller is fill the gap. Fill the gap between a crappy pawn shop that is willing to offer you pennies on the dollar and somebody who is willing to give you a halfway decent fair price on your item and take it off your hands. You fill that gap and I promise you, your whole entire reselling business is going to change. So many resellers on YouTube today only talk about, you know, where to go source, how to source, what to look for, all of these great things. Not saying that anything is wrong with that, but nobody is talking about bridging the gap between, you know, pawn, sh pawn shops and these, whatever's in your area. Maybe you have thrift stores, maybe you have pawn shops, maybe you have you know, antique malls and other places to sell items, but whatever those places are, let's call that pawn shops and getting selling their item for themselves, right? Because that's really what it boils down to. When somebody has an item that they're trying to sell, they only have a couple of options. Usually, they only have a, a, a couple of options, and that is to take it to a pawn shop or a thrift store and get ridiculously low offers or put the item online, let's say Facebook Marketplace or uh, uh, Craigslist or OfferUp, let go and try to sell the item themselves and get, you know, obviously a much better return on their item, obviously, because if they sell the item themselves, they should be able to get top dollar for it, but it could take them a week, it could take them two months. So there's, there's their two options. Now, if you can bridge the gap between either one of those options and offer people a solution in between either taking pennies on the dollar or waiting and holding out and selling their item themselves, you're going to win. As a buyer, you're going to win because people are going to start to realize that, man, we have another option. We don't have to take our items to the pawn shop and we don't have to try to sell our items ourselves we can take our items to Chad. He is a buyer. I, you know, I met him, I did business with him, or a friend of mine told me about him, or I seen his advertisement on Facebook that he buys items. Let's take our stuff to him. He pays really good prices. He's fair, but he's honest. And that's what you have to do in the reselling business. So I hope that answers your question of how do you come across deals like this? Not only do you, how do you come across deals like this, how do you come across all kinds of deals? That's where I get most of my stuff from. Most of the stuff that I buy comes from people bringing items to me. The rest of the items that I get come from yard sales and estate sales and thrift stores and flea markets. And I'll never stop doing that. As a reseller, I find it my job to be out there sourcing on almost a, a 24 hour basis because in reality, when when I'm, even on a day off, I'm still working because I'm still answering my phone. I'm still, you know, messaging people back. 
People are calling me on a regular basis trying to sell me items. So I don't ever get a day off. I'm working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, unless I take a, uh, a vacation and I actually leave town. Then I put down my phone. I don't answer it. But, you know, to answer your question, that's how you uh, come across deals like this. And that's how you're supposed to do things in 2019. Uh, as far as reselling, I, I, that's the way that I think you should do things. Um, also, let's talk a little bit about, you know, investing back into your business. I know that this is kind of way off topic, but it's something that I thought about last night because I received a, a question on one of my older videos uh, regarding re investing back into your business and how should you go about doing that? Is, is it just buying? Basically, what they said was, do I just keep buying inventory? Is that investing back into my business or should... You know, or should I actually, you know, put money into like a business account and invest back into my business? Uh, the question was really vague, but I'm gonna try to do my best to answer it. Basically, you know, if you're a reseller and you're running a reselling business, you definitely want to bring back money. You know, you want to put money into your business because you want to make your business thrive. You want to build your business. You want to add things to your business, and the best way is to do things that are gonna, you know, that's gonna complement you and your business advertising. Maybe you, you haven't already invested in a thermal printer. Maybe you need to get better equipment to test items. Maybe you need to invest in shelving units or uh, plastic bins to store your items. May, one of the biggest uh, investments back into your business that I think you could do is a lighting setup. Maybe you have uh, poor lighting. Maybe you need a better camera. Maybe you need to invest in putting together a better photography table. There's numerous things that you can do to invest back into your business. Those are just some of them. And then there's also just investing back into your business by just buying inventory. Obviously, everybody has their own way uh, and their own method to buying inventory. I know some resellers right now that are probably watching this video would say that, hey, you know, you have all of these toys. I wouldn't buy anything else unless I get all of those toys listed first. Well, that's not the way that I do things. Uh, I'm going to be out this weekend hitting garage sales. I'm going to be going to estate sales, buying more stuff. I'm constantly buying because I'm constantly selling. Now, if I was the type of reseller that had tons and tons of stuff that was unsold and in my business was choking and I had no capital and I didn't have any cash flow and I, you know, and I was experiencing cash flow problems, then yes, I would not be buying any other items. I would make sure that I would, you know, bring money into the business before I took money out of the business. But seeing that that is not a problem, my business is constantly making money and I never have any cash flow problems because I'm selling items just as fast as I as I can buy them. And that's the real secret to running a profitable reselling business. You need to be selling as much as stuff, you know, as you're actually buying. If you're not selling anything and you're just buying, then yes, your business is going to choke, you're going to have cash flow problems, and you're not going to be successful. But uh, anyways, hope that answers both of those questions. I try to do my best. Uh, I got to get to work. I'm going to start actually uh, photographing some of these items tonight, and then I'm going to start listing some of these items tomorrow. So uh, be on the lookout for more update videos. Hopefully this stuff will start selling soon and I'll be able to make some more content. Thanks a lot for coming and watching another video. If you haven't already, go down there and hit that big thumbs up button. If you haven't already watched the haul video when I got the items, go check that video out. Uh, until next time, folks, I'm out of here. Peace.